I'm joining us right now, Rich Kincaid, the immediate past president of the Detroit Sports Broadcasters. Good morning to you, bright and early. Hey, I uh, turned on that uh, part they offered exhibit, by the way. I just want you to know that. Did you? It was going to be exhibit and Eminem and Rich Kincaid, huh? Yeah, yeah, but I, you know, other things going on. So. That's quite a troika, to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> A uh, little bit of trouble, well, a lot of trouble, actually, for the Michigan State basketball team now. I think uh, Corey Lucius, arrested early Monday, uh, operating a vehicle while intoxicated, did so right smack in the middle of East Lansing on Charles Street near Linden, uh, just barely over the legal limit uh, at 0.9. The limit is 0.8. The problem is he's under 21, and uh, he'll be 21 on November 5th. This uh, just after uh, Chris Allen dismissed from the team for failing to meet obligations by Izzo. What happens next, do you think, for Corey Lucas, the junior uh, Corey Lucius? Yeah, it's, uh, that's a, a, a tough decision for, uh, for Tom Izzo uh, uh, to make. You know, this, you're not used to um, hearing news like this from the Michigan State basketball program. It's always been uh, uh, squeaky clean. I, I can't remember, can you, too many scandals involving MSU basketball, so I suppose it'll be, uh, in that sense, interesting to see how uh, Tom Izzo uh, deals with it. But, uh, you know, hope certainly uh, a very high for the Spartan team heading into the upcoming season. You know, they're, they're being talked about as a, as a number one, two, or two or three team uh, in the nation. And, uh, you know, obviously, Corey's a very important part of that. But uh, I'm, I'm going to guess he's going to miss some time, yeah. It is uh, outside the season, and I understand it's against the law, but, I mean, if you did a test of how many college students drink before they turn 21, you'd probably get a pretty good percentage, wouldn't you? Yeah, you'd probably get 80 or 90 or 100. Actually, I, I would, would be, you know, my guess. I mean, it, you know, realistically, but the, the, problem is, the problem is when you get caught. Hmm. Okay, we'll stay tuned on that one. No statement yet, of course, from Tom Izzo. He said they're gathering information is what his uh, sure. statement said. Tiger Woods took out a $54.5 million mortgage for the mega mansion he's building on Jupiter Island there in Florida. That spans three parcels of land, and it'll include a tennis court, an oxygen therapy room, multiple pools, and a state-of-the-art fitness center. Sounds like he's building a resort instead of a house. It sounds like Ellie didn't exactly get everything, uh, did she? Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. that was the uh, that was the deal. I thought that uh, you know he'd given her seven several hundred million dollars in the uh, divorce settlement. It's not a ton, really. like you know you give that kind of money, you haven't got uh, too much left. But uh, not not the case with the uh, tax. Now, when you say he put a, was the fifty four million a down payment, or is that the the, the cost of the house? These things, these things are important when I uh, when I consider buying my next house. <laughs> More a fifty four million dollar mortgage. That's wow. pretty. I didn't even know you could get a mortgage for fifty-four million dollars. Hey, rates are low. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, that, that's uh, I think that's a fixed rate, probably over uh, thirty years. Yeah, there you go. Although wow. we're going to win. Do you think Corey Pavin will uh, will add uh, Tiger Woods to the Ryder Cup team? Sure, looks. Yeah, like I it. do. I do. I, at the end of the day, and I, I guess the end of the day is this weekend, isn't it? He's going to make his uh, his uh, his picks over the weekend. But yeah, it's almost like he's. It's almost like you can't leave the guy off. It's, it's, he's in a tough situation. Uh, you know, if, uh, if he leaves Tiger off and the uh, U.S. doesn't win, then people are going to say you should have put him on the team. If he puts Tiger on and, and Tiger stumbles, uh, you know, he, he, he really can't win here. But, you know, he's, you're going to hope that you get the, uh, the Tiger Woods that you saw, for example, in the uh, first round of the bar phase as opposed to the last two. Yeah, and I sort of wish maybe Tiger Woods would uh, take it upon himself to tell Corey Pavin, uh, I, I think I'm going to opt out this year. Uh, but I probably that's probably not in his makeup to say that sort of thing. You know, the one thing that's played here, Michael Patrick, uh, uh, with, with Tiger Woods would be that, that knee injury that he had a couple of years ago. Yeah. I remember reading an article shortly thereafter that chronicled uh, other players who had had a similar knee injury, and none of them had, uh, had come back to be the players that they had been prior to the knee surgery. And I think a lot of people are going, well, it's all the, the, uh, the uh, off-field stuff, if you will, that's affected Tiger so much. It may be something, you know, that, that, knee, that knee may have more to do with it than, uh, than people realize. Mm, hadn't thought about that. Tigers blew a three-run uh, lead late in the game yesterday and lost to the Twins 4-3. to three. Phil Koch uh, took the loss in relief. The Tigers are now 11 games behind Minnesota with 29 games left. Do we start talking about the magic number pretty soon? It's 20. I've been talking about it for a few days Have now, you? as a matter of fact. Baltimore, I think, on, it was Sunday, Baltimore became the first team in the majors to be eliminated from a division race. And that, uh, when I saw that, 
I looked up the uh, the Tigers number, which at the time was twenty six or twenty seven. It's down to it's down to twenty now. We have you know any, any combination of Tigers losses and Twins wins equaling twenty in Detroit's out of it. But yeah, that was uh, they had to go in and sweep that series to have any chance uh, whatsoever. Now that's uh, that's gone, and uh, yeah, it's time to you know we've sort of been doing it the last half of the summer here. Watch the uh, young players and uh, and start to see how they're going to fit into the plan for next year. Because yeah, this year's dead. I'm afraid. Yeah, boy, it's so disappointing. Really thought the uh, target would be an opponent race this year. Going to be Irene night already, I guess, huh? And Great so, yeah. Real quickly, do you think Manny Ramirez will make a difference going to the White Sox? Could uh, that help the White Sox power past the Twins? I, what I'm always going to remember is Manny Ramirez's last at bat with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Remember the way he exploded on the scene in Los Angeles, carried that team for the last uh, couple of months, hit 400 for the last couple of months uh, when he first uh, joined uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, at Coors Field on Sunday, they brought Ramirez in, uh, uh, pinch hitting with uh, bases loaded and they're down three, four runs, something like that. Uh, first pitch is a call strike. Ramirez says something to the umpire, gets tossed out of the game. <laughs> After strike one, they had to bring in another pitch hitter. That was the <laughs> last at bat of Manny Ramirez's career. Yeah, he's going to help uh, Chicago some, but I don't think he's going to be able to help them enough to, to, to pull this thing out. It, it looks like Minnesota's going to win the division. And Chris Chelios is going to retire, but stay with the Red Wings in an advisory capacity, huh? Well, that's going to be that's going to be good. I go uh, a few years. Chelios had. Three great careers, if you think about it. One with Montreal, one with the Chicago Blackhawks, and, of course, with Detroit. When he was playing for Chicago, Detroit and the, the Blackhawks were getting ready to start a playoff series. And I'm uh, covering the pregame skate, and it's so difficult to get a hockey player to, to talk. But Chris Chelios was usually always accessible and good fun, too, and a tough, tough player, Rich Kincaid. Uh, we'll talk again soon. Look forward to you guest hosting next Friday on this program. I'm Michael Patrick Shields.